Hey, I'm Libby Brockoff. I own an independent agency in San Francisco called Odysseus Arms. Before OA, I started the global agency Mother. Many times in my career, I've been asked about the future of advertising. And I think it's a really difficult topic. I find it pretty hard to be able to make predictions, especially about things in the future. If I told you we'd be able to witness George Floyd's murder at the hands of the Minneapolis police, you probably wouldn't have believed me. The global pandemic, the attempt to overturn our government with the rioters in Washington, quiet quitting. What about Elon Musk going in and taking over Twitter? the rise and the fall of the Bitcoin and NFTs, inflation. But the most important thing about all of these things that we cannot predict is how people will feel about them, how it will affect their behavior and their attitudes. So if you clicked on this video thinking that I was going to give you the secret to the metaverse or any of the other platforms or what was going to happen with the media and the future of advertising, you're wrong. That's not what this is going to be about. None of those things are actually important to the future of advertising. Consumers have a really high expectation for a brand. They want them to be super positive. They expect brands to connect with them in a very high touch sort of way. They want brands to help other people and they want brands to raise the moral standards of our society. If that wasn't a big enough ask, They've asked brands to unite people from different backgrounds, and they expect brands to be leaders in our society. So I can teach you how to help a brand become a consumer's BFF. And I think that is truly the future of advertising. Understanding the brand can be your superpower. It can be your forever superpower. It keeps you in front of whatever comes next. It can be a compass for the change of whatever technology is emerging. Your job in advertising is to use your imagination to figure out how to connect with other humans. That's it. It's that simple. You're a relationship expert for the brands and consumers that they're talking to. That connection is the new currency. All the platforms and technology are going to keep changing. You're not going to be able to stop that. The ones that we'll be using in a few years are just being incubated today. What you need to think about is human beings, understanding your consumer and telling the story that makes them actually feel something. When I was first starting out, I was talking to the legendary Gary Goldsmith about partnering with him. I was young. I was right out of school. He was the one show, best in show gold winner. I said, how do you do such great work? What's your secret to all of this? And he said, oh, let me show you. And he reached down into his bottom drawer. And the whole time I kept thinking that he was going to show me some really cool film references or drawings or something like that. And instead he pulled out this huge file folder. Like it was almost like a lawyer's office full of newspapers, charts, articles, research, everything about the consumer that he could possibly find. And I said to him, that kind of looks like a court case. And he was sort of like, yeah, well, that's how to make work that people love, how to know everything about your consumer so you can get the idea actually right. So that's the secret to the whole thing. Get to know your audience. What do they dream about? What do they fear? What do they think is cool? What do they think sucks? Why and how they use the brand that you're working for. So get to know the people that you're trying to connect with. Because the better that you know them, the more powerful your work can be. For way too long, advertising people have tried to create ideas in a vacuum. In fact, many have avoided any input from the consumer at all. It's like the plague thinking it would kill their work. It's like, oh no, the consumer, let me put my idea in front of the Grim Reaper. But consumers know a lot, right? And they make a lot of content and they know what's cool. So I invented a proprietary process called the third eye to understand consumers and creative ideas and what they would respond to. And it runs by doing something really crazy, actually talking to them. And I can teach you how to do it. 
We talk to consumers, we listen to them, we bring them in and co-create with them. I encourage you to find your consumers. Where are they hanging out? Are they on Reddit? Are they in a grocery store? Go meet them. Go find out what they respond to. Show them your ideas, talk to them, maybe even try the product together. Sometimes you have to go back to the drawing board after you do that. But who cares really? Who cares if you have to recreate something or do something new? Because when you start over, you start over smarter and you're able to do something people think is cool. We found that people are fans of the brands too. And sometimes they get really protective. That's a good thing. We might need to dial in our work a little more. People have often thanked me for letting them be part of shaping a brand. People will not let you do lame work. And these principles are not just applying to the platforms. They're applying to marketing and creativity. This kind of insight makes the difference when it gets down to executing work. If marketers think they know the audience better than they know themselves, or if you think that, you can pretty much guarantee your TikTok is going to be a dud. But if you're open to honesty and a bit of listening, you're going to have a really easy time. So once you have a handle on your audience, the other thing you need to do is create a story that they can connect with. You need to execute. And that becomes the fun part, right? Coming up with an original idea, writing the story, figuring out how and where to tell it, how to shoot it, how to design it, which words are the most powerful, the music, the type, the design, the direction. Those skills are critical to telling a story and they give you something AI cannot impersonate. And that is your taste. Taste is what makes your work special, powerful, and unique. It's going to win you awards and it keeps business inside your agency. Taste is what separates you and your work from the clutter. So always keep feeding, refining, and influencing your taste. You do this by exposing your brain to all kinds of ideas, art, music, and people, and making the things that excite that part of your toolbox. So even though in the beginning, I said it's hard to make predictions, especially about the future, here's my prediction about the future of advertising. The future of advertising won't be built by the new platforms or technology. It's gonna be built by the next generation of people who learn how to use their imagination to connect with other humans. Real people drive real connections. Brands need to listen before they speak. 64% of people say they want a brand to interact with them. Advertising folks are gonna work faster and have better ideas and get better results in the future because they're gonna do what it takes to understand everything about the consumer they're trying to reach. They're gonna become experts and create ideas and execute stories that make the people they are trying to reach laugh or cry or get excited or talk to their friends about. Connection breeds loyalty and bottom line growth. When consumers feel connected to brands, they're willing to spend 76% more on that brand than the competitor. The next generation of thinkers will know how to apply their ability to connect to other humans, to whatever platform or technology emerges next. Real people are the key to authentic relationships, and they're going to create a future that is inclusive of all kinds of people and all kinds of different points of view, because they know that that's what will make their work and the world we live in better. That's the future of advertising. So don't forget to have fun while you're out there doing it.